Hey guys, so just a quick video. Um, so the new issue of uh, Mankind Quarterly uh, just, just kind of dropped or was released and so it's using the new upcoming feature here and uh, as you can see there's uh, more than one paper by me. Uh, there's this review which we'll cover in a different video and then there's um, this new study with um, <clears throat> with Brian Pesta and it's it's interesting enough that it's worth going over um, uh, in a video just, just briefly. Um, so I, uh, since most people don't have access to uh, Mankind Quarterly, they don't, they can't do this. Um, instead, I put the paper here for you on ResearchGate, and it's going to be linked. And so I'm just going to download it here. And um, whoops, go on the screen. So so the main thing we were looking at at this paper is that um, many of you know that uh, people do research. They're looking at say uh, the U.S. states, and you can get kind of an average IQ. For each uh, U.S. state, it's kind of based on SATs or GREs or uh, NAEPs or some other like uh, some other kind of standardized test that people take. And uh, so, what many people don't know is that you can also get uh, county level IQs. And so, these are also based on the same kind of test, not SATs and uh, ACTs, but uh, they're based on like state uh, tests. And so, my understanding is is roughly that in the final years of uh, public schooling. In, in the United States, uh, you, uh, they, each state has its own uh, state that it forces people to take. And so uh, it uses this to kind of keep track of uh, how, how well different schools are kind of doing rising, falling, you know, this sort of thing, um, seeing whether the achievement gap is going away, this sort of thing. Anyway, so some, some nice people at, uh, I think, Stanford, they decided to, um, to gather all these state data sets of these tests and figure out how this you can use partial overlap in the questions, like this question has also in that test, and so on. You can figure out what the norms are. And so what it means is that you can put all these on the same scale. And uh, so the end result really is that you can get uh, a very decent IQ estimate for each U.S. county. And so U.S. counties, there's about 3,100 of these compared to uh, the 50 states or the 50 states plus D.C. that many people use uh, in these analysis. And so it's very important to get your, your sample size up much higher than 51 states because with the sample size of 51, you can get pretty much any results that you would care to imagine, right? It's, it's not a good level uh, to do any kind of multivariate uh, research with. And so I was very keen to see if could, we could do better. And, and in, indeed, uh, we can. And uh, so in this, in this study, we, we were merely interested or merely, we were mostly interested in the, uh, the, uh, associations between intelligence, social status, and voting preferences. Because if you follow the the, uh, the public press or the media, New York Times sort of thing, there's kind of a narrative of um, like rural countries or country, flyover country, this place. They both, they more or less vote Republican on, on average, right, at the county level. And like the large cities, dense urban areas, they, 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 vote, um, they vote Democrat in the U.S. at least. And this is this is uh, mostly true, and uh, but there are some quirks to this finding that's worth going over, and so uh, that's what we looked at. So we're mainly just going to be looking at the images and tables, and if you want uh, the details from the text description or the text discussion, you're just going to have to read it yourself. Um, so the very first basic finding is that we we plot the uh, the average IQ uh, at the county level and. Since uh, these data aren't given with IQ scores, you just kind of uh, get some kind of number that isn't really on a scale that's sensible for most people. So we convert these to uh, Z scores. And so Z scores just means that this, the, uh, you set the sample mean to zero and the standard uh, one standard deviation becomes one. So it's in, uh, a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And if you plot the data, it, it looks like this. And so these kind of like blue regions are higher intelligence and the the red ones are lower ones. And you can kind of see that uh, there's a lot of like small areas that it's kind of randomly, seemingly randomly distributed. They have like high. And then around the, the city, uh, the, the east coast area here. And then equally for the red ones, low IQ hotspots, so to say, there a bunch of these are in the deep south, um, rural deep south. So it's probably because they're mostly black. And then in west US, there's in western middle, there's a bunch of like random spots uh, around and these mainly relate to Indian reservations um, and other rural people. And so um, you can also look at the 
Democrat advantage. And what this is 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 uh, you take the the um, the uh, you know proportion of votes in a, in a given county, and you just look at how many uh, what's how how many more are in favor of Democrats. And so more blue colors on this uh, map means they vote more left wing, so to say. And so you can kind of get the typical New York Times perspective. You get uh, West Coast is blue. Uh, down here, Hispanics close to Mexico, blue. Some Indians over here, blue. Northeast Washington area is blue, close to Canada, blue. East East Coast quite blue. Some I have some cities here, maybe that's probably DC or something. And uh, deep South. Uh, so it kind of it kind of looks like the same as this one in in some ways. And so you'd kind of expect that uh, higher intelligence would predict Democrat advantage. And if you look at a bunch of studies that have been done at the individual level, this seems to sort of be the case, at least sometimes. Like sometimes you'll see Democrats are slightly smarter, sometimes not. It depends on stuff whether you're looking only within whites or not within whites. And sometimes, uh, depending on what controls or subgroups you're doing, actually the Republicans are smarter. So it's it, it kind of the, the difference at the individual level is more or less zero. Uh, but that doesn't mean the, the the difference at the county level is also zero. And um, so we looked at at this question. So in table one here, we just have the uh, the just the correlation matrix. And it's been weighed weighed by the uh, the square root weighted by the square root of the population size, and the reason for this is that if you have like a county where less like thousand people and you have a different county with a hundred thousand people, it seems absurd to most people that you should weigh these as exactly the same in your analysis. But on the other hand, you probably don't want to weigh them so that they uh, they have a weight that's a hundred times different. So because that way you you're more or less ignoring the data from the the rural county, the small county. So. By using the square root, you kind of get an intermean, you get an intermediary position of how much you should assign weighting uh, or weights, and so that's that's what we've been using since 2015 or something. Uh, it doesn't usually matter that much. Um, I didn't, we didn't compute both of them for this study. Um, I did look at them when I was doing the analysis, and they they look more or less similar. Um, any case, um, unsurprisingly, we see that. Uh, so S, the S here is the general social status, so SES. Um, this one has been extracted from like 25 in different indicators, like every kind of thing you can imagine, income, education, crime rates, uh, health, blah, 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 goes into one composite score about how overall well, well-being well this, this county is. It's un uh, unsurprisingly highly correlated with the IQs of these, uh, which, um, and the demographics is, is what you'd more or less expect as well. Um, so then we can kind of look at the uh, the voting fractions, and so the voting fractions are in these in these rows, right? And so we see uh, I, we put the the dem democratic ones first, and I don't know what's doing this. Um, so we see that if we look at IQ, uh, it's it's actually negative for uh, Democrats slightly, and slightly positive for uh, Republicans, and down here. And if you look at the uh, the social status, it's actually the other way around. Which is highly surprising, considering the correlation of these two predictors is is 0.77, right? So, so how how does that happen? Um, there's some more stuff with the green stuff. We're going to skip these. Um, and so that was kind of the the obvious main results of the correlation. So you're like, apparently at the county level, uh, IQ is slightly related to voting Republican, not Democrat, but it's the other way around for social status, uh, and hence the point of the title: smart and poor, or rich and dull. Which it apparently seems to be what the, uh, the what the results say, and uh, but of course you can also put this into a, a regression and to try to add multiple predictors at the same time to see how the how the things uh, how the results differ because you can have things like suppression effects or uh, weird interactions, non linear effects, and so on. And so what we're looking at is there's actually uh, eight regressions here, and so we've done one for each outcome. So these are the one the three ones for the Democrats winning. Uh, these are for the Repu Republicans winning. So these refer to the different elections, right? 2008, this is Obama's first, uh, Obama's second, and this is the Trump one, the current one. And so these both relate to the, the one, uh, the Green and the um, Libertarian Party in the also the Trump election. And so what we see is that we combined all these predictors in, in one model, and we see that uh, still IQ uh, has a negative uh, coefficient and uh, social status has a positive one that's much larger and uh, he the these ones um, basically non-white means voting more democrat uh, the, the one for asian is is curious because it's it's larger than one 
So what it would seem to imply is that if you if you move in, if you change the demographic of one county by one percent, so you change it uh, from whatever it was to one percent more Asians, uh, what this number is saying is that you would expect the Democrat vote to go up by one point two points, right? So that's uh, that seems so. It seems like when you move Asians in, you convert other people who are already there to voting Democrats as well. So like Asians kind of convert other people. Uh, so this is this is this is not seen for blacks where it's about one, um, meaning that if you change the demographic of of, of county, you know, to make it one percent more African American or black, it it's on average it votes one percent more to Democrats. This is not too surprising if you look at the individual level results, where you can see that uh, African Americans vote something like ninety to ninety five percent Democrat. So you'd kind of expect this kind of result. But that's not the case for Asians at the individual level. So I, I don't know. You can make up your own speculations. Um, this one is also curious. It's the uh, homogeneity in race terms of a given uh, county. So the more homogeneous they are, the more Democrats they vote. Yeah, that, that seems kind of opposite what you're usually told. And it's in fact, it only happens in regression. Um, so if we look at this number, which um, 3.6 or, or, or point. Um, 0 0.36, uh, 37. So that's a positive number, right? So homogeneity predicts voting more Democrat. But if we go back to, um, if you go back to this table, we see homogeneity here and Democrat is actually super negatively correlated. And, and so you're, why, why does it switch? Why does it predict one thing, uh, when it's alone and a different thing when it's not alone? And the reason for that is that homogeneity is, um, is super strongly related to uh, these proportions, uh, the population proportions. Uh, apparently, you cannot see it here. Uh, did they cut it off? Homogeneity? Oh, yeah, yeah. So here. Um, so homogeneity of a given county in the US, it's, it's super highly correlated with the actual racial proportions. And so as you can imagine in the US, being more homogene uh, homogeneous, it may basically just means you have more white people. Because that's, by statistically speaking, the the main way you get uh, to be homogenous in the U.S. is you just have these like wh white rural counties or sometimes sub suburban or whatever they call these kind of in the close neighborhood to city. And uh, so being less homogen uh, homogenous means having more of anyone who is not white. So that statistically, that's why homogeneity kind of works the way it does when you have it alone. But when you then have it in a regression, you allow these uh, the demographics to have their own uh, direct effects. And then you can see whatever is left over for the homogeneity effect. And it seems to be uh, positive, which is uh, kind, of, kind of curious. Um, um, so you can kind of make a speculative theory of uh, why this is the case. Uh, holding other things constant, uh, social status and IQ, if you make it more homogenous, then it seems that uh, people vote more Democrats. Um, so you can kind of think it as like well-off, politically um, liberal, but like quite white uh like suburbs or something close to a, like in a, in a in a in a red state uh yeah red state and then when you move in um some foreigners then some of these white people who were previously quite lefty they see kind of the reality of uh problems with these uh the other groups and then they kind of convert anyway that's very speculative but that would be one way of thinking about it um uh, population density kind of goes the way you'd expect um you can also see in kind of in line with the political um, uh, polarization is that the uh, the elections become more predictable at the county level. So in in two thousand eight, we could predict about 40, uh, 48, 46 percent of the variation uh, at the county level in the outcome. But then in two thousand twelve, it became fifty fifty uh, fifty one to fifty three, and then in two thousand sixteen, it's almost seventy percent of the variation. Uh, you can predict uh, uh, how of how the counties are doing, and so it seems that. Uh, there is an increasing polarization, not just among individuals, but also between counties. So in geographical polarization in the U.S. at least. Um, so there's, there's much more you can dig into with these results. And, and as usual, of course, uh, we've made all the data public and the code public. And so you can kind of go play with it yourself. And uh, that's it for today. What is fucking wrong with you? Liberal tolerance at hand.